some of your favorite cafe ingredients like coffee, vanilla, or even chocolate are going through the roof. Now, this price increases are not only impacting our wallets, but also hampering the experience of indulging in a cup of latte or iced coffee. Now, to discuss this trend, I'm joined by Rajat Agarwal, the CEO of Barista. Thank you so much, Rajat, for taking the time. Thank you. So, Thanks uh, for having me here. My first question to you is, how is this price hikes impacting the everyday cafe experience for consumers? See, what we have noticed recently in the last year or so, there have been a lot of inflationary pressures on various commodities which we use at the store. And uh, some of the key materials which we use are largely coffee beans, cocoa, and butter. These are the three, and also milk being uh, one of them. So these are the three, four things which we have seen a large impact on the inflation. But uh, uh, to be honest, uh, we as a brand and largely the brands who are operating in the cycle in the, in, the, in the category of cafe chains, it's very, very difficult to kind of take very, very knee-jerk reactions on the prices. So again, the idea is that to look at holistically addressing the problem rather than actually taking a price increase for some of the price, some of the commodities where the price hike has happened. We've also done our diligence in terms of the prices which, we, which have increased. As of now, uh, we've not uh, decided to kind of pass on any inflationary trends to the consumer. It's pretty much uh, born at the business level. But yes, uh, maybe when we look at our periodic cycles of price hike, hmm. this may be built in uh, during uh, those uh, times. All right. So what is the extent of price hikes will a cup of coffee see? For example, maybe when you take the next price hike in the next cycle, what would that be? See, generally, uh, historically, the prices hike, price hikes which we have taken are generally in the range of 3 to 5 percent. And I don't see that trend would change much. Again, as you were to understand, it's a very, very consumer-centric business. And you have to look at the end experiences also, which matters a lot. And price sensitivity is very, very important. So we'll keep that in check while we were to decide. But uh, basis my hunch of what we have seen on the price hikes, I am not sure that there would be anything which would be very, very major. It would be slightly built into the prices whenever we take those price hikes. Historically, we have been into the range of 3 to 5 percent. I don't see that trend changing much. Okay. But in terms of supply, if you, can you share some uh, insights on what kind of supply disruptions are you seeing, if at all any? See, if you were to look at supply disruption, the way we look at our business is that there's a very, very annual planning and forecasting which we do in, in advance, right? So when you talk about some of the season change, their forecasting opportunity is pretty much annual. It's not that it is something which is done on a monthly basis. Yes, for the smaller players, I see there is a challenge where the price hikes are hap happening very, very frequently on the commodity side, which is, in, which is disrupting their price chain. Mm -hmm. More than a disruption on the supply chain, it's more to do with the inflation which is creeping in for the sustenance of business. So what are we, we do as a business, uh, there is an annual forecasting and our back end pretty much is sorted. So we are not seeing any uh, supply chain disruption in our business in terms of our annual forecast of the business. However, there may be some challenges with some of the smaller players which feel around some of these inflation which have happened in the past. Got it. In terms of competition, you know, it's not just from, a, you know, players like Starbucks, but right. we are also seeing a lot of uh, D2C brands, uh, be it um, the third, uh, third, uh, third wave. Third wave. Uh, so we are seeing a lot of competition from them. So uh, how do you view the competition and also how do you plan to stay ahead of the curve? So we are, uh, we were the pioneers of coffee chain in India and still a leading chain in terms of our network circle. We are a 400 plus store brand currently, and the second best would be, so we are in the top three as of now, being the second largest. And uh, we are trending towards moving towards the largest coffee spot in terms of the network which we have built in. And that time is uh, very, very soon that we will be reaching uh, the largest coffee chain in India very, very soon. So we are pretty much growing our network at a robust pace. Uh, there are new entrants which are coming in and see overall what you need to understand as a phenomena is that the overall industry size is growing. So industry size today out of the coffee chain market if you were to look at is about $2 billion out of which the cafe segment is about 0 0.5 and that market is growing at a very very healthy CAGR. It's about 9 to 10% year on year so which is something which is very very healthy for the overall industry. The socio-economics and overall the way the the dynamics on the retail side are exploding in India. There is definitive demand on some of these. Mm. And that's why I see new players, not just the local players, but a lot of international brands are coming in. However, we are very, very confident with the 
with the network which we've already created, which is about 100 plus cities now, and we're also the largest already in Sri Lanka. Okay. I'm sure they will take a bit of time to kind of reach anywhere closer to what we are. Mm. And we are not sitting pretty. We are opening a certain level of stores every year. So we are also looking at doubling the store count, what we have today in the next five years, which will be about 800 in the next five years. Mm. So that is something which we are also working very, very categorically. So we see that even with the larger place, I don't see uh, uh, our uh, pattern in terms of development changing much and I am very very confident uh, as as I said uh, the, the problem is when the industry is saturated as the industry and the demand is actually growing at a certain surge and that is something which is healthy and competition actually at least keeps you in good spirits to at least uh, run your business professionally and that is something which we have been able to do very well in past and even today. Right. So you said you want to double your biz, uh, store count in the next five years. So right. you have 400 stores which you plan to take it to 800, right. right? But that is still less than the number of stores that Starbucks is planning, which is 1,000. So what would be your uh, focus? Would you like to be in the number one player or the number two player? So your idea is not to only look at multiplying the number. Our idea is to look at building a sustainable business. Okay. And uh, the number planning may be very, very different for various organizations. I can only comment about what we are doing. But our idea to do business is to build sustainable enterprises. And we are pretty much committed to that. OK. And in terms of revenue, what is the target that you have set for yourselves? And also, at what rate are you growing year on year? See, at a network level, we are about 240 to 250 CR as of now. And we are growing at a 20 to 30% year on a year and that is something which we see is very realistic mm -hmm. and very very achievable with the pace which we are growing. Okay, but you also plan to expand your FMCG business, right? So you have been doing this every year in the last two, three years. So what is your, again, plan for the FMCG business? On the business? FMCG side, as soon as, as we are developing multiple proprietary products, the idea is to also kind of take it to beyond stores and that is something which we have been able to do well in the past and there is a definitive focus to really grow that network. That business is still very, very small compared to our store level network business. Okay. However, there is a definitive focus. More than the FMCG business, over the last uh, year we have also started our vending business which is becoming very, very significant for us and we are very, very bullish to look at capturing the B2B business in terms of vending and we are very, very uh, focused in terms of growing that business. That network has uh, worked, uh, has grown well for us in the recent past and I'm sure and the kind of efforts we are making on that journey, it will really create a big differentiator in terms of our market positioning, not only on the source side, but also on the B2B side, because that's the reflection of the brand while you see it incorporate and then you consume at the retail presence. And that's what we are trying to build a 360 degree solution within our ecosystem. Got it. Also coming back to your cafe business, are you also looking at exploring, uh, you know, bringing any freshness in the menu or changing the menu? So um, there is a famous saying that what got you here will not get you there, right? So that is some of phenomena which we really work very uh, hard around and that is something which is a very, very focused area. Every year there is a newness which we are trying to build in. Recently when most of the stores we have also started a pilot in terms of really creating fresh menu around stores. There are pilot stores which we have already executed hmm. and there are big plans to look at fresh menu integrations. We are also completely looking at a complete beverage uh, menu revamp and that is something which is also in planning so i'm okay. sure as we as we engage more you will see more and more new things happening at barista okay. and i think you to the q3 you will see a lot of newness around the overall positioning of the brand in store experiences uh, especially around the food and beverages Okay. Uh, now, you know, in terms of the online trend, I would like to understand, uh, you are there, uh, uh, you know, in the online space with your FMCG product, but what kind of demand actually take place online and how relevant is the physical channel also? See, it's very, very relevant. As I said, the overall cafe industry is about 2 billion and out of that 80% of the consumption is happening actually at in-home, which is pretty much relevant to the FMCG point of view and also the retail presence we have. So that is where we have been able to create a journey, not only just on the physical storefront outside Barista, but also on the omni-channel front in terms of various uh, marketplaces which are there to sell our products. So that is something which is becoming very, very relevant. As I said, 80% consumption happening at home. We are a very, very relevant product even at home, and that is something which we see hmm. a big uh, uh, sense of growth happening from that uh, okay. channel as well. Okay. On the uh, store size front, you know, that's been something that uh, all the cafe chains are exploring. They're either moving into smaller store formats, or somebody are also right. uh, sticking to the large format. So what works for you? 
So we have actually identified our sweet spot and the, the, the spot which works well for us is about 800 to 1200 square feet box size and that's pretty much typically what we look at. Mm -hmm. We are not looking at growing and looking at st stores which are too big. But yes, in our uh, overall last five years of growth, the typical box size which we are working is about 800 to 1200. There have been mm -hmm. sizes which have been outlier but that's more store specific and location specific. However, the sweet spot which we are looking at is somewhere the median is about 800 to 12 Mm -hmm. And that is the journey which we want to even pursue in the in the coming future. Uh, apart okay. from that, also there have been various models which we have done. So we have a smaller mo model which is the Barista Express, which is well suited for the transit hubs, uh, mm -hmm. maybe corporates, and some of the places where you have captive audiences to engage. And that's where we have also integrated our Barista Express format, which is a very very small format, which is about 100 to 150 square feet format which is also well versed in some of these places. Okay. Also, you know, Barista as a brand, it is well known in the north. In the south, uh, south, not as much. So do you wish to change this perception? See, every brand, uh, the way you were to see, have a regional play, right? CCD originated out of Bangalore. That's why they were very, very strong in the, the South Indian uh, hemisphere. Hmm. Now, if you were to look at Barista, we were pretty much a brand out of north. That's why we are very, very strong on north. But yes, we are a, we are a cafe chain which is well spread hmm. across India. Uh, uh, about 10 to 15 percent of our inventory is in south hmm. uh, already as of now, and that is an area which we are trying to work hmm. upon in terms of increasing our footprint in the southern region as well. Also, you know, if I can just interrupt and say that uh, even uh, CCDs, is, they have their own set of challenges. So do right. you wish to capitalize on that? We have in a certain way capitalized on some of the locations where we felt there is a business opportunity and we have already capitalized even today. Hmm. We continue to do so. So it's all about uh, creating a universe where you can capitalize on opportunities. Mm -hmm. And historically also we have done that and even future if there is anything which is an opportunity where we see there is a definitive business to gain, mm -hmm. we will be capitalizing on that. All right, my last question to you is like three key trends that you're seeing in terms of coffee con consumption in India. What would that be? So I think people are more educated now about what they are consuming. They know what they want to consume. So that is definitely a big shift which has happened over the last 10 years in terms of consumer education about the product. That is a big thing. Second, com consumers are becoming more and more demanding in terms of their preferences. That is something. And also, uh, uh, as we see that there is a large set of also uh, uh, consumerism which is happening in the smaller towns being tier 2, tier 3 mm -hmm. and that is something also which has helped the, us as a brand in terms of capturing the smaller pockets of India okay. where there is a lot of fascination to consume branded products and that is something which is changing in a big way in India. So you would be entering into the tier 2 markets as we well? We are already in a big way in tier 2, tier 3 market about 40% uh, to 50, 40 to 45% mm -hmm. of our inventory is already in that market. We are the largest in Punjab with about 100 plus stores and uh, the intent is to look at capturing the tier 2, tier 3 markets because what I see is metro market has a certain level of, uh, uh, if you were to look at met capturing metro, there are a uh, certain level of development restrictions beyond a point. So you anyways have to kind of get, get into the smaller territories and they have worked well for us in the past and we are very, very bullish to capture those market segments in future as well. Right. If I can add just one more question, uh, in terms of, um, you know, the kind of stores that you will bring in tier two, would that, would that be different from what we have in tier one? Not exactly. We uh, generally adapt on the menu side to look at maybe adapting our menu which suits a bit of local preferences, but in terms of store look and feel, uh, what we have seen in terms of how we plan our store, you may need a more loungy store versus mm -hmm. a more international store in the metros, and that is some of the store aesthetics is something we keep on changing. The real estate is available at affordable price. You can look at a large size store in a tier two versus a hmm. versus a metro. And those are some of the business decisions which we keep on taking based on the location. There is also premiumization trend that's happening. Yeah. So, do you think that there is enough gap for you to also increase the prices? See, premiumization has two elements. Premiumization is not only about uh, uh, upsizing the check, but it's also about how you represent your portfolio. So, premiumization for us is looking at creating portfolio. Uh, in terms of especially the add-on opportunities which we can create, which holistically addresses and gets a larger consumer segment coming in. Hmm. That is what we want to kind of look at when we look at premiumization. Historically, and I was reading a few articles, almost 30 to 40 percent of the portfolio today sold in major uh, retail chains is the premium product. And that is something which we are already working on. Uh, apart from the merchandising range which we have at our stores, there is a lot to 
look at engaging on the coffee, coffee side as well. And as we look at our new menu, mm -hmm. when we launch in the Q2, Q3, there would be a few aspects of humanization in terms of the product profiling, look and feel, which will built in. Mm -hmm. And that will create a category differentiator. The value really adapts to the product. Uh, mm -hmm. The consumer today is willing to pay a price if the product is good. And that is something which we've understood well. And we've been able to kind of create those experiences in a very, very seamless manner. All right. OK, thank you, Raja. Thank, thank you so much for talking to us. Pleasure, thank you.